Shut up, Iris. Shut up. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sheree. If you're new here, thank you for clicking on this video today. In today's video, we are going to be reviewing season nine, episode 12 of Married at First Sight. So let's get started. All right guys, so this episode is uh, the retreat episode where all the couples uh, get together and they go someplace like right before decision week. Decision week is I believe 11 days away at this point. Uh, so we get to kind of see, you know, all the couples together and they, the point of it was to get, uh, what was the point of it? <laughs> I guess to get some, I guess, feedback from the other couples and just, I don't know, because they are in a special, unique situation. So it would be beneficial to be around people who are experiencing the same thing with you at the same time. So I, I do like this edition. This has been going on for, I think, the last two or three seasons, maybe, where they actually had the couples um, intermingle with each other because before the couples didn't even meet throughout the entire experiment. So um, I like it. So let's get started. Um, I kind of wrote down the couples um, like I usually do into different categories, but then I was like, it kind of intermingled throughout. So this might not be the same structure, but we'll just go ahead and get started. So we see, um, sorry, I got makeup brushes from the last video I just filmed right here. We see Elizabeth and Janie um, who had gotten into another fight, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they hadn't been together in four days. And the only reason why they were getting back together at this point was maybe A, because they had to go on this weekend retreat together, or uh, B, it was time for them to have sex again, because you know they fight to have sex and be crazy, so that was them. Um, then, <laughs> when they got to the uh, to the cabin, because they went to the cabin somewhere, I don't know where they went, maybe, I don't know, I don't know what, like Asheville, I don't think they went that far. I don't know the mountain areas around Charlotte, and maybe I need to investigate it, but maybe I should not because of the bears. So anyway, that, I'm getting off track. Um, but then Elizabeth and Jamie volunteered to cook because of the way that they had behaved at NASCAR. First of all, who been to eat food cooked by nasty Elizabeth and Jamie after they done? I don't trust their hygiene practices, so I wouldn't be eating that food. So. Mm, I hope, yeah, mm -mm. I'm not cooking enough food they, they uh, make it. But then also, um, <laughs> speaking of the cabin, they actually see a real life bear, like a big behind bear. I would never go outside the entire time that I was there. A full grown bear just outside, that close? Mm -mm. You gonna catch me hiking nowhere? I ain't doing nothing except for when it's time for us to leave and go back to Charlotte. No. The, also, the other thing that I have for Jamie and Elizabeth was that um, at the end of the retreat, all the couples had the opportunity to um, go somewhere individually. And their activity was to go into this salt cave, you know, the kind of thing Elizabeth enjoys. But then Jamie nasty herself and they're eating the salt and... It's just, I just have too many hygiene concerns with Elizabeth and Jamie. I, I yeah, let's, let's keep going. So, Deanna and Greg, I'm going to move back. Like, like I said before, this video is probably just going to be all across the place because it just, I just took notes all across the place. So, before they go on a retreat, um, they go on a double date with Deanna's sister and her boyfriend who had been together for three years. And they were a cute couple. Um, not going to mention something that I noticed, but I'm just going to keep it cute and keep it moving. Um, they went to this throwing X place, which I think would, would be a cute date just to see, you know, I feel like that would be cute. Um, what else did I say? The girls did better than the boys. Um, because I think the boys were just putting too much power behind it and it was just like, just throw it and it'll stick. But I don't think that was a cute little thing. Um, Deanna and Greg, uh, Greg, <laughs> Deanna and Greg arrived first at the cabin, so they were able to select the best room, which I really, really enjoy. Like, I don't want to get the last of anything. I like to get there and get get the best room. Um, so they did that. Then they saw a spider, like <laughs> this big old spider, like the size of my hand, 
they saw and they didn't kill it. Why didn't they try to get somebody from the crew? Like production was shut down before if, as long as the spider is alive. So why did they leave it alive for then um, a Keith and Iris to come and just have a whole, and see the same spider? You know, Iris probably, I would probably behave the way Iris was behaving. <laughs> to be honest with you, because I don't do spiders, I don't do snakes. I don't be doing the animals, okay? So, yeah, that was crazy to me. Um, Deanna did mention in one of her, I think she had a one-on-one -on -one with some one of the girls she was talking to about how she was growing. And I, and I honestly do think that Deanna is really growing because she just had a lot of walls up. And I, and I see the, the she's trying. And out of all the couples, I feel like they have the best chance of long-term survival. So I give that to her. And even Greg going outside his comfort zone and trying weird food, which, you know, my taste buds are garbage. They just, I don't eat cheese. So that tells you a lot about me. <laughs> um, my taste buds, I should say. Um, but to be trying all that weird food, I was like, go Greg, go. He He's willing to do whatever it takes to, you know, make his marriage work. So that's Deanna and Greg. Moving right along to Iris and Keith. Um, they, Keith is still, you know, playing the role of a nice husband because I don't think he wants to hurt Iris's feeling, feelings. And you, I'm not going to go down the road of how I feel about Iris because by this time, if you don't know how I feel about Iris, I need you to go catch up on my videos. <laughs> um, which leads me into a little bit going in on Iris about her and Amber were having a conversation and Amber was telling her how um, Matt and her decided to kind of back off on the sex, which, you know, that's a whole nother side story that we don't know about. But of course, here goes Iris. Yes, that's the reason why I'm still a virgin and blah. Shut up, Iris. Shut up. Anyway, that's as far as I'm going to go in on Iris. But um, yeah, and Keith, I don't... Uh, all the conversations that they've had throughout the weekend or how long they were there. Um, Keith, at least on camera, he's trying to say that he just doesn't know what he wants. And I still think he's just playing, you know, Mr. Nice Guy. Moving right along to Amber and Matt. Um, Amber has a, uh, dinner or lunch, I forgot, with her friend, what's her friend's name? I can't, I didn't write down his name, but, um, he was telling her the truth and she was like, she really, Amber was like, she really likes Matt and he melts her. And then the friend was like, but does he melt for you? And that was like, I felt like a genuine question. Like Amber is willing to do whatever, even destruction within herself to make this marriage work. And it was just just clearly bad just like they left that girl in that marriage with that crazy boy from last season or season before it's the same thing going on like you guys see this is not good and at this point it's just like come on man pull this girl out of this um because it's just this is not good um and in the group session i think yeah it was it was the the husbands and the wives, they were all together and they were expressing, you know, their feelings and people were, were being very uh, vulnerable and they kind of could feel that Matt was full of it. And I think Iris, of course, was the one to call him out on it. Uh, or maybe it was Elizabeth. It was one of the crazies. <laughs> um, and yeah, and they were able to call him out on just something was just not right. And he was able to kind of explain himself down, but Amber, of all people, was like, yeah, I hear what Matt's saying, but I still don't believe what he's saying because he's just all mouth at this point. But I need the amp Amber, if you know this, then, you know? But so overall, my thing that I took away from watching the retreat was that they all understood, you know, that marriage is hard work. It's just not fairy tales and, you know, lollipops and pound cake or whatever. It marriages work. And even as a single person, I know that being around somebody, having to be considerate of other people, having to have somebody, you know, that you think of before you make decisions and all of these things, this, it, it's an adjustment. And this is for the rest of your life. So of course, it's going to be hard work. It's just not going to be somebody that you can just have sex with every day, just right there. I mean, that's nice too. But 
marriage is just hard work. And I'm amazed that a lot of people don't think about that before going into it. They just want to be married because it's technically the right thing to be doing. And, you know, we are, we have that, it, ever since we, you know, are little, we have that put in that, you know, marriage is the, you know, get a good job, get married, have kids. Those are kind of the standards we have for our society of what we deem successful. And so we, most people, I won't say everybody, but most people grow up having that in the back of their brain. Not everybody does though. So, um, yeah, I think that was it for the video. I didn't have any more notes or anything. So, um, I did see, again, I didn't see any previews. So I don't know if, you know, how many episodes we have before we actually get to see decision day. Um, but it's close, so let me know, as always, what you guys think in the comments below, and we will chat down there. As always, you guys be blessed, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.